Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today in this video, we'll be seeing the multiple access techniques in wireless technology, like how uh, the data transfer takes place in different wireless devices by using different techniques. So we have four different techniques. We have the frequency division multiple access. We have the time division multiple access. Then we have the code division multiple access. And finally, we have the orthogonal frequency division multiple axis so uh, in this video let's see a brief understanding of each of these techniques and how it basically works so uh, first of all we start with the frequency division multiple axis uh, short named as fdma so uh, in this what you have uh, on the x-axis you have the time and on the y-axis you have the frequency and so frequency band is considered and it's divided into uh, different time slots so the frequency spectrum which we have uh, seen in the previous videos so uh, that frequency spectrum is uh, basically divided into n number of slots and each slot is allocated to a device present in the wireless network so uh, we have seen various devices operating in uh, different ranges we have the wireless personal area network wireless metropolitan area network wide area network the zigbee protocol bluetooth WiMAX, and many other devices so uh, each device is assigned different frequency depending on the uh, division they have been given and the number of devices uh, now this techniques here works for the devices if they are in small in number and so uh, if there are larger number of devices what basically happens is uh, there may be uh, some devices which have already been assigned some frequency slots and if it is seen that it's not being used then the frequency remains uh, wasted or it goes wasted so uh, that kind of uh, unusability is there and it uh, is difficult to carry out the operation in duplex mode uh, like from the server to receiver if there is a synchronization uh, communication takes taking place and so uh, like you have the normal frequency band and so uh, there is a division between each frequency so uh, for example if this is f1 f2 and f3 then uh, there a band should be uh, kept unallocated so that no interference occurs so it's like there is a band wastage uh, which goes uh, as we can see in frequency division multiple axis so in order to overcome uh, this uh, limitation of this band unallocation what we have is we have the time division multiple axis tdma so here what we have we have no provision of any dedicated channel as such we don't divide the frequency instead we uh, put the uh, devices into different time frames like uh, if device 1 is given time 1 then uh, it can only do the data transfer or any activities within that time it cannot uh, go into time 2 and do its activity so every device has been given different time slots and within that time slot it has to operate or do the uh, data transfer operations so frequency spectrum is given for a short duration every device is assigned a time frame which we call in this so devices use the available bandwidth for uh, transmission on the given network and the period uh, for transmission of this data is called as the time frame it's short named as tf so device transmitted uh, the data with this tf and uh, there is a wait for each tf assignment like uh, one device uh, will transmit at one particular time so uh, it cannot be like that at one particular time there cannot be multiple devices transmitting at the same time it's like uh, at uh, 10 seconds uh, device uh, 1 would be transmitting the data in T1 then similarly at the same time uh, device 2 cannot uh, transmit the data at time 2 so that kind of pipelining is not possible in this uh, one device has to wait and after that is completed you can uh, start the another data transfer so uh, if uh, the TF should be neither short or long so uh, the time frame which you give uh, it should not be too long or it should not be too short like if uh, there is a case like if you assign the time frame as short then there could be a chance that there is a propagation delay so propagation delay is like uh, you transfer that signal and uh, when it reaches to the other end systems it might be delayed and to uh, receive the acknowledgement uh, there kind of uh, been some kind of asynchronous operations uh, which might be there and which could cause some inconsistencies in the data transfer so that kind of problem is that if you assign the time frame for a short duration and if it's long then 
the waiting time obviously increases for the devices uh, in the queue so they may be waiting in the queue and they may be uh, seeing for when their turn would be coming so in order to overcome this we have the code division multiple access cdma so uh, in this the signal is sent in a unique coded format and so uh, you don't have any interferences uh, in this kind of technique so you have the available frequency and all devices can transmit the data at one single particular time so uh, it as this technique assumes basically that all devices should receive with the same power and so uh, like uh, whenever at uh, starting point like you have for example say 10 devices so 10 devices should transmit the data with the same power and with the same speed and so it should reach the destination and should uh, receive back and give the acknowledgement uh, to the end system so uh, that thing is assumed in code division multiple access but it's not so and so it faces a major problem which we call as a near far problem uh, especially for a CDMA and this problem can be eliminated by means of the power controlling technique and so it controls the transmission power from where it's being sent so uh, that power is being uh, controlled or it uh, has been brought to a considerable uh, frequency range so that the transmission takes place smoothly uh, next we're talking about the final uh, multiple axis technique we have the orthogonal frequency division multiple axis that is we have the OFDMA so in this we can see the two different diagrams so basically this diagram is uh, the simpler uh, this version we have uh, this frequency allocation so in this what you have basically at the right angles the data is being given and so uh, n number of users can access the data at the same time without any kind of uh, interferences or any kind of other uh, jamming or signal so uh, what basically uh, this technique employs is uh, it has the multi-user version of the OFDM scheme that is it employs a orthogonal frequency division multiple uh, multiplexing scheme so that scheme it uh, uses in order to implement this uh, multiple access technique and it assigns a subset of the carriers to individual users so uh, every user has been given some time and so uh, he can do n number of activities within that particular time and then similarly user 2 can come within that time and he can use so uh, there is no kind of uh, interference or any kind of jamming due to the vicinity signals and the uh, access or the data transfer can take place uh, in a very good manner as compared to these other techniques so it allows simultaneous low data rate transmissions uh, which are for uh, low power which are low power consuming so uh, basically what we have is uh, whenever we do any kind of modulation whether it's a data modulation or voice modulation what basically happens is the uh, side bands just spread when we apply this technique and so the receivers which are there at the other end from the transmitting system it should receive all these signals so uh, what this receivers has uh, they basically has some kind of uh, partition mechanism or protection rings that we call as the uh, guard mechanism in this so uh, that is seen in other devices but in OFDMA this uh, guard rings or the concept of uh, guarding is not there uh, but instead this since the OFDM or the uh, multiple axis technique here is at happening at right angles and so it overlaps the signals and so uh, there is no uh, question of uh, keeping any guard bands or guard signals there so that is the main advantage of uh, this so there is an overlapping kind of activity which happens at the right angles and so you can see it uh, only the user is allocated at the right angle here also the division is done at the right angles uh, next this uh, is applicable for IEEE devices 802.11a and ACs and uh, then it's uh, employed for schemes like digital audio broadcasting and digital video broadcasting schemes so well that was all regarding the four different techniques of multiple access uh, in wireless technology so hope you guys enjoyed this video and got educated by watching this video please do like share comment and most importantly don't forget to subscribe to my channel thank you very much for watching this video